Right. January 2020. Still shielding, still in lockdown. What we're going to look at today is we're going to look at a software package, PC4. It was first launched on the ill-fated Sinclair QL. It was supplied originally on uh, four microdrive cartridges. These were later changed to uh, floppy disks for the IBM PC, pre-Windows, DOS-based, 1980s. No mouse, no graphical user interface. One of the world's first Office integrated software packages. It had a word processor, a spreadsheet, a database and a business graphics package. Quill, Abacus, Archive and Easel. It had a common user interface, which was groundbreaking at the time. The competitors would have been WordPerfect, Lotus123 and DBase. And these three packages had different user interfaces. So an office worker would have to learn three user interfaces to be able to run this office software. This used a common user interface. It also had interactive help. It was fantastic. If we have a look at an example here, we're looking at the word processor, Quill. The top part of the screen is all the commands and referencing. And F3 will always bring up the commands. In any of the applications, F3 will bring up the commands. F3L will always load some data. F2 will remove the prompts or reinstate the prompts on the top of the screen. And F1, as you'll see in a second, will always find your help. It's interactive help, context sensitive. So whatever you're typing in at the screen, it will find help on that subject. At the time, that was groundbreaking. We're used to it now, we'd expect it. But at the time, that was quite revolutionary. Uh, it wasn't a graphical user interface. It was pre-Microsoft, sorry, pre-Apple Macintosh. So it used a quite clever color system to show whether, this, whether, they were, whether the uh, text was underlined, bold, or different formatting options. It was close to WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get, but it needed these uh, colour coding to get it to work. Now then, how do we get this legacy software to run in a Windows environment? If you're running in Windows 32-bit, you might get it to work in a command window, command com. If you can get command com to work, you should be able to load or open the files in that. In fact, if it does work, you would probably be able to just double click the the uh, application exe file and it should run straight away in uh, uh, in that command window. If on the other hand you can't get it to work in uh, Windows, what you need to do is you need to make sure that because it uses an 8 plus 3 file name and extension, short file names, and it only likes directories to be short without spaces, then you need to put the directory close to the C drive. I've called mine C working. You might call it Cyan or PC4 or something. But it wants to be right very close to the root directory. So the, the, uh, the file handler can file, find the files easier than if it's got a complicated directory structure. If you can't get it to work in the command window, <coughs> excuse me, you'll definitely get it to work in DOSBox. So if you install a version of DOSBox, I've got a DOSBox 0.74 working here. And once I've got it running, I need to tell DOSBox uh, where this working directory is. I, like I say, I've called mine C working, and you'll see there, I've mounted the drive C, and I've set a path to C working, so now it knows where to go. And if I call up easel, that's the uh, graphics package, and I set the defaults to 80, and that's an example of the graphics package working in DOSBox. One of the revolutionary things, as we said, is that we can transfer data from one of the packages to the others very easily. And at the time, in the 1980s, that was a difficult concept. 
uh, and you're to do lots of preparation work. You don't have to do that with these. So if I uh, have a look at the Abacus spreadsheet and uh, I load in a file that's on the disk, comes with the with the software called Cash Flow, the uh, F2 uh, removes the prompt so I can see more of the uh, of the Cash Flow spreadsheet on the screen. I can then export that. Uh, the manual will show you how to export it. I can export that and I can then load it into uh, the graphics package and there we've got a graphical representation of that uh, class, cash flow spreadsheet. 1980s, don't forget. So it's not object linked and embedded. It means that if I make an alteration in Abacus, it won't be automatically updated in the spreadsheet. But again, at the time, being able to move the data from one package to another package simply was uh, was groundbreaking was was fantastic so much so that you could move information not only between the packages but between other software and between other examples i'm going to show you an example here by using my cyan organizer and a comms link and taking one of the quiz question database files from quiz pack i'm going to clear off my spreadsheet i'm going to uh I'm going to move the margins in. I'm going to look at the data in my uh, word processor. Sorry, not spreadsheet. I'm going to look at it in my word processor. I'm just going to move the margins out of the way uh, so as how it doesn't try to word wrap it once it brings it into the spreadsheet, into the word processor. And I'm going to import the file. And it was uh, it's a quiz pack database file. It's called QCyan because it's a quiz pack questions about the Cyan organizer. Uh, and I'm going to bring that in and you'll see that there I can look through it quickly and I can see that yes all the questions all the uh, fields are in quotes in quotes and they're all comma separated because that's the format that I want to bring into archive the database to show you that we can move it easily between the uh, word processor and the database before I do that on the disk there is some databases supplied there's one called Gazette which is a world's database uh, and you can uh, work on that if you download the file you'll get that with it f2 removes the prompts and you can uh, design your own screens i'm going to close that i'm going to clear the screen i'm going to import this uh, qcyan database sorry it's an export file and i'm going to import it as a qcyan database i'm going to call it the same uh, and I'm going to display the data. F2 removes the prompts. F2 puts the prompts back on. I can actually improve on that screen by designing my own. So I've got a screen layout pre-prepared, quiz pack. And there it will display the two screens that the, uh, that the data pack uses. When it's in quiz pack, the uh, Cyan Organizer quiz software. The beauty and the power of word processing is in the uh, writing of the programs and the, to, to run and work on the data. I've just got two simple ones here. Again, they're supplied on the disk, but uh, I've just got two, review and start up. If I run review, it will just cycle through the, uh, the questions in the quiz pack database, showing the question screen and the answer screen as it would appear on the organizer. Right, those people that are still with us, most people have bounced out by now, but those of you that are still with us and are interested in having a go with this uh, science software, PC4, then if you follow the link be below, it will take you to a, a web page where you can uh, download the PC4 zip, which has got all the information that were on the four floppy disks, uh, and you can also download example zip, which has got all the files and databases referred to in the manuals uh, that are supplied with the disks. The manuals are uh, on the same web page, so you can download the manuals, download the zip files, and have a go. All that leaves me to say is good luck, and if you like it, send us a comment or a note through the website.